The series is sponsored by Taskade, a real-time organization and collaboration platform. Make sure to check the description for a discount on your subscription. Hey everyone, my name is Vishwas and welcome to the first of many roadmaps we are going to see for the year 2022. In this video, we will take a look at the learning path for HTML and CSS, which is the first step in becoming a front-end developer in 2022. Let's get started. We're going to begin by understanding what exactly is HTML. HTML, which stands for Hypertext Markup Language, is the most basic building block of the web. It defines the meaning and structure of web content. It comprises of HTML elements or HTML tags which are responsible for the content to appear in a certain way in the browser. Once you learn about the various elements, learn about attributes. Attributes contain extra information about the element that you don't want to appear in the actual content. Once you have the basics out of the way, focus on writing semantic HTML, which clearly describes the elements with a meaning to both the browser and the developer. Finally, focus on writing accessible HTML. Accessibility is the practice of making your website usable by as many people as possible. Apart from catering to people with disabilities, Accessibility also involves making your website accessible to people with mobile devices and even slow internet connection. Being able to write semantic and accessible HTML is a huge plus point during your interviews. Now once you have a good grasp on HTML, the next topic is CSS. There are quite a few things to learn when it comes to CSS so further split this topic. Let's start with the fundamentals. You're going to begin by understanding what exactly is CSS. CSS, which stands for Cascading Style Sheets, is a style sheet language and is basically the code that styles the web content. So HTML defines the structure of your website while CSS is used to selectively style those HTML elements. We're going to begin by understanding about CSS selectors, which are rules to select HTML elements in your website. There are a few basic selectors, a few complex selectors, and something also known as pseudo selectors. Make sure you learn them well as they are the foundation to writing good CSS. Once you understand the selector rules, you then move on to the different CSS properties. Basically, what are the properties for a particular HTML element that you can style? For example, color, background color, the font size, font style, and so on. Knowing the properties is not enough though. You also need to learn what values can be specified for those properties. Some accept a number, some accept a string, some a percentage, and some accept a predefined set of values. Make sure to also understand the differences when specifying units as an absolute value or a relative value. The next thing to learn about is CSS specificity and inheritance. For me, this is one topic that you definitely should master to be able to write good CSS. When multiple styles are applied to the same element, you need to understand how the browser resolves the conflicting styles. The next topic is CSS box model, that is padding, border and margin. Understanding the box model is the key to creating layouts with CSS or aligning items with other items. And speaking of layouts, we have the display and position properties. You can control whether an element in your page should span the entire width or just the width it takes up. Should an element be positioned in the natural flow of the elements 
or should it break out of that and be absolutely positioned? Or should it be fixed to one particular place in the web page? You can control all of this using the display and position properties. They both are very powerful and are really important to create layouts with CSS. Now, once you're thorough with the fundamentals, you can dive into the more advanced concepts, shadows, gradients, transforms, transitions, and animations. These topics will help you take your user interface to the next level and when used in the right manner, can really help impress your clients with their requirements. Next, we have CSS variables, which allow you to define values once and reuse them across multiple styles. A good example is when defining the colors for your design. The next topic is media queries. Media query is a CSS technique which is useful when you want to modify your site depending on the device type, screen resolution, or browser viewport width. This is a good topic to go through and understand about responsiveness in a website. Finally, wind up your advanced CSS by learning about the layout modules, Flexbox and Grid. Both help simplify the layout of your web page how to horizontally align elements, how to vertically align, how to center align, how to create responsive layouts are all sort of expected from a front-end developer. I would suggest you start with Flexbox and then dive into Grid if you need more flexibility in your layouts. The next topic in CSS is CSS preprocessors. They are scripting languages that extend the default capabilities of CSS. What I mean by that is they enable you to use logic in the CSS code, such as variables, nesting, inheritance, mixins, functions, etc. You can write reusable code snippets, which effectively reduces the amount of code that you have to write. The popular ones out there are SAS, less and post CSS. SAS is something I would recommend you get started with. All right, the final discussion around the CSS learning path is about frameworks. Sometimes writing your classes from scratch can be time consuming. CSS frameworks provide you with classes that have predefined styling so that you can focus on your app styling rather than creating the styles. Popular ones out there are Tailwind, which is a utility first CSS framework. And we of course have Bootstrap, which was hugely popular in the last decade. And we also have Materialize, which follows material design specifications. Have a glance at all three and pick the one which best suits your website. So this is my take on the HTML and CSS roadmap for 2022. If you're planning to start learning web development in the new year, make sure to subscribe to the channel as I have a few more roadmaps lined up this month on JavaScript and a few front-end libraries or frameworks. If you found the video helpful, please do leave a like and share the video with your friends and colleagues.